Um, I think again, there's no hard and fast rule because you know companies operate very differently. In the B2B space as well, I would say there are two types of companies. One is more sort of B2B to C, you know, like companies like Inmobi or Freshdesk, who are still having like tons of users and they kind of act more as B2C companies. Uh, and then there are enterprise companies, you know, like your Oracles of the world. Um, Microsoft is, you know, sort of evolving from how it used to function more as a traditional enterprise company to more as a B2C company. But, you know, Adobe's, your Oracle's, your uh, Intuits of the world are still, uh, you know, are the more sort of enterprise type of companies, right? So the, there are a couple of key differences in your role as, you know, PM in like an enterprise type of company and a B2C company. Uh, very often in an enterprise company, uh, a lot of your requirements will be driven by your clients or your key clients, right? If you are selling an Oracle's, you know, product suite to someone, if five of your top clients really want one particular feature or really want one enhancement in the product, that really goes into your roadmap, right? So a lot of times the requirements are flowing through the clients rather than, you know, necessarily your end user research. The second difference in enterprise many times is that the release and the build cycles are very long. You know, you might be working for 12 months on, uh, you know, a, a Adobe Photoshop product before that update is released. Now that's very, very different from a B2C environment, right? In, in a B2C environment, the release cycles are usually two weeks. So every two weeks you're shipping something new, your users are using it, you're learning from uh, them, and you know, you're know you kind of internalizing their learning and then evolving your product. Uh, so it's very, very iterative in a B2C environment, uh, and there's a lot more room for experimentation, testing with a smaller cohort, et cetera, versus an enterprise where you know your build cycles might be 12, 14, 16 months long, and then you're really releasing that new big update to your end clients. Um, another difference is that a lot of times in B2B or enterprise space, PMs also are more involved in what they call product marketing, which is you know thinking about the marketing collaterals of your product, because that's what you're really selling to enterprise, right? So thinking about kind of product uh, marketing collaterals, you might even be involved in some cases in BD or sales personally, uh, in training new clients, uh, and also in some scenarios in enterprise, you actually might be the PNL owner. Um, it's not uncommon in enterprise for the product manager to be the final PNL owner of that uh, uh, product. Uh, by the way, by PNL I mean profit and loss owner. So you are the one who's responsible for the profit kind of that is coming from that product. Uh, in a B2C space, that's usually less likely. You know, you'll usually have a marketing team. You'll have someone who's the PNL owner. Uh, you will be giving directions to the marketing team on what you believe is the right way to take this product to market and for users to adopt it. Um, and if any communication needs to go around that, but a lot of you know things like collateral cre creation, etc., will be driven by more marketing people rather than necessarily by you. Um, yeah. So I think I think that's that's pretty much you know like key things to keep in mind while thinking from B2B to B2C. B2C. I think a challenge that people trying to transition from enterprise to B2C face is that they're not able to convince potential employers that, you know, they can get out of that mindset of, you know, just working on a product before release for 12 months to suddenly this mindset of, you know, releasing every two weeks and being able to quickly learn and iterate and, you know, uh, kind of keep evolving the product.